Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, comes as no surprise to anyone at this point, I'm sure, that we're about to start on an acoustic guitar kit. This is a parlor acoustic, the SL APK 10 from Solo Guitars. Nice small one, something that even I can hopefully play. I'm, I'm not very good with acoustics. I find them difficult to work with. Uh, this one I'm really looking forward to. I think it's going to be lots of fun, and I've got some cool stuff in mind for it. You've all seen me unbox a bunch of upgrade parts for it recently as well, so that's what I'm going to be building it with. But first off, well, we need to get it put together, and we need to get it grain filled, and we need to get it finished, and all the fun stuff that I enjoy. Uh, so in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the grain filling process. There's going to be two different types of grain filling on this one, two different parts of this process. I have decided on a finish, so we'll chat about that. And in today's video specifically, we're going to be filling in all of this dark wood on the back and sides of the guitar, and I think we're also gonna do the neck. So let's get started on that. So before we jump right into this process, let's talk about what we're actually planning. The back and sides of this are going to be dark, okay? If, uh, they're already a nice dark kind of mahogany color. They're a little reddish. I want them more brown for what I'm doing now. So I'm gonna be using the oil-based dark walnut grain filler from Oxford. This Oxford is also available at Solo. And so you can get it there if you want or you can get it directly from Oxford. Now, I've laid out, instead of using my usual mat, because I've, I've got basically a shower, like floor towel mat thing um, that I use for setups and stuff now. But instead of using that, because I might get some mess on it, I've just laid out this stuff. This was part of the packaging material for the guitar. So that's gonna be the sides and back. I'm gonna do that first, then depending on how that looks, I'm either going to grain fill the neck with the same product, I may instead use the red mahogany grain filler from Oxford, or I may just not grain fill at all, okay? So those are my options for that. This is very smooth. It's gonna get an oil finish on the neck, so I don't think I necessarily need to do one there. Now, the guitar is getting lacquer. It's gonna be Oxford lacquers. You know how it is. My favorite uh, nitrocellulose lacquers and I'm gonna do a lacquer job on this that's gonna involve a burst on the front. Um, I think the burst, the last burst I did with this stuff turned out beautifully. This one's gonna be a little lighter. I'm gonna try and keep the front nice and light. So for the front, I'm actually not going to use a typical oil-based grain filler. What, instead, what I'm gonna use is Ecopoxy. I have some Ecopoxy epoxy. Uh, you can mix colors into it. You can mix all sorts of stuff, um, powders and all sorts of stuff into it. But what I'm gonna do is just use it clear and just do a quick clear grain fill on here. I wanna keep the front lighter than the rest of the guitar. So uh, even with the burst, I don't wanna get in really dark to start off with. I also wanna preserve some of this um, detail in the rosette and everything, and I don't want to throw a dark grain fill in there. So with all that said, let's get started. I'm gonna get my oil-based grain filler, my dark walnut mixed up. You guys know the deal. If you want any of this stuff, the kit, the grain filler, uh, check out the Solo Guitars link in the description. If you use that link, it's an affiliate link and it helps me out. If you're picking something up straight from Oxford, awesome, straight through their website and where it says, uh, how'd you find out about us? If you feel like mentioning my name there, that helps me out as well and I would appreciate it. So let's get started. All right, guys, so I ended up taking a pause here to kind of contemplate life and more importantly, let my grain filler warm up. It's still winter here, it's February in Canada in Edmonton. So um, it was cold and my grain filler, not surprisingly, wasn't moving around quite the way I needed it to. So I've warmed it up overnight. I've decided to change which one I use. We're going to actually end up using the red mahogany here. This wood, you know, it would look fine with the walnut. It would look fine with a clear sealer. Uh, it's, it's pretty. It's nice wood, but I want a red hue on the sides I've decided, sides and the neck. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get to it. I'm gonna try and keep my workspace relatively clean here. I am not very good at that, but you are gonna want a glove of some description when you do this. It's not just to keep your hand clean. It's actually gonna be part of the process that we're using. There are a bunch of different ways to, use, to apply grain filler, but a key component of, of most of the good ones in my view is pushing it into the grain. And so that's what we're gonna do here. You can tape off your binding if you want. I'm not going to. You guys have seen me scrape bindings before. I have no problems with that process. That's how I like to do it usually. When I go to spray, I probably will tape off the binding um, on the outside, not on the top. But for the purpose of grain filling, I'm not gonna bother. So this is gonna be a pretty straightforward process. Honestly, it's oil-based. 
This stuff is really nice. It mixes up well when it's warm, which it is now. So I'm just going to put some on here. Simple as that. And then I'm going to have to move it around because it's also kind of a stain, this stuff, because it's tinted. So I got to move it around a lot to make sure I get it looking nice and even when it all comes off. This is the red. You already know that. I'm going to have to sand it back after so it's not going to look dark like this when all is said and done. And one thing that I can use to help me move it around and which I like to use is a razor blade. Nice and flat. I just pull it along like this. Get it moved into these other areas. And you can do it all with a razor blade if you want. You can push it down into the grain, up and down and sideways, so to speak. Um, but I'm just going to do that with my hands with the glove. Pretty easy system. It might look a little uneven during this process if you're scraping around a bunch, but uh, that all comes out when you sand at the end, which we are obviously going to have to do. That's part of the deal with grain filler. So, that is about all you need to know about it. So, now you can just kind of watch me complete this task. And I guess I'll throw on some music because you guys seem to like it when I do that and when I. Uh, when I shut my mouth for a change, when I don't have anything more that is important to actually say. So let's, let's move on to the music.
So as you've seen, the next step after applying the grain filler is removing the excess. And this is why it pays to push it in there a little bit. I mean, it's helpful to have the grain filler pressed into the grain because it does a better job that way. But you also want to try and smooth it out so you don't have too much excess on there. This can be sanded off and that's a popular way of doing it. But how I like to start is just by scraping. I, I use a razor blade and I pull off as much of it as I can that way. And I'm pulling it along at an angle. I'm not scraping it as though I'm trying to remove wood per se, at least not to start with. I'm just pulling it along with it kind of being dragged at an angle, not cutting, but with the blade dragging behind as I pull. And you will have seen that I started off and I kind of took a layer off because I had to. I didn't want to push too, too hard on this. So over in the back right corner there, you can see where I took a layer off and now I'm coming in and finishing that up. And what I'm left with here is a filled wood that is mostly ready for finish almost. Uh, you can see there are a few little patches left in the areas that I've completed, so i got to go back and finish those up. And then I will also sand this afterward just to make sure that it's finished ready. But this deals with most of it. So uh, scraping does create a, a quite smooth surface, especially if you have a sharp blade and you're doing it properly. Uh, so sanding afterward is, is partially to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and even, but also partially to abrade it a little bit more so I don't end up having a perfectly smooth scraped surface that the paint will have trouble sticking to. That is how I like to start all of these and it also helps me clean up the binding. So you can do this with a scraper as well. Personally, I'm not stellar at sharpening my scrapers. I don't use them all that often and they are not at the shop here. Uh, I had to move this to the shop to let it dry properly because of the temperature. As I said earlier in the video, the temperature in my garage where I was doing the filling itself is pretty low. So this needed to be warmed up so that it could dry properly and once it dried, there we have it. I did the scraping and this is what we're left with. I think this looks beautiful, especially compared to what we started with. I liked that original mahogany look, but uh, I'm really fond of how this filler makes it look, how this filler darkens everything up, adds that red hue, and really just gives a really rich, deep look without even having applied finish. I mean, literally, this is just a grain filler at this point. So when you have a nice open grain, it, uh, it has a pretty significant effect, and we can see that in some of the open, kind of streakier areas because mahogany has this kind of streaky grain pattern so you can see how that filled in in those areas and then uh, where there's closed grain it it doesn't do quite as much but it still kind of acts as a stain this stuff because it's an oil-based grain filler very happy with how this is turning out as you can tell so i've got this uh, sped up to about 300 percent right now and it, it takes a while it's a lot of work to get all of this off especially if you apply it relatively thick i tried to keep it pretty thin and even but uh, there's definitely a layer on there and that's fine it's it's kind of the old better safe than sorry type thing you could apply the grain filler with a razor blade and press it in and scrape it kind of as you go to get a really nice even finish right off the bat that doesn't require as much removal but what you risk there is shrinkage so if the grain filler uh, happens to shrink while you're working with it then, or while well, it's drying rather, then it's going to require another round. And that ends up just being more work. Uh, so I'd rather do the work in one step like this and make sure that I've got the grain filled and I don't have to worry about any additional shrinking. And then I don't have to come back in and do it again and worry about it darkening up or anything like that. I get my color that I'm working with the first time and, uh, and it's ready for sanding after I've got it scraped and then it's ready for finish. You may notice there's a little bit of red kind of standing on the front there. Don't worry about that. That's going to be very easy to take off. I can scrape that off with the razor blade, much as I'm doing the rest here, uh, and, and get off the little bit that got on there. And then a little bit of sanding to prep the front for its own grain filler will solve the rest of the problem. So no issue with that. It It's important to be careful, but a little bit on the front isn't going to cause any significant problems. And I've actually got a tiny little bit on the fretboard as well. Uh, for which I do the exact same thing. I take the razor blade and I just scrape it off and then sand a little bit as necessary. I don't think I ended up having to sand the fretboard at all, but I could have. It's no problem. It's wood after all. So same process on the neck. No surprise there, I'm sure. Same process for the flat areas. 
and really I end up doing most of the curve of the neck, the carved area, um, with the razor blade as well. It's it's a good option. I did have to change razor blades a couple times over the course of this process. You don't necessarily have to, but they're cheap and they work much better when they're sharp. You're not going to sharpen a razor blade. It's absolutely not worth it. So uh, all I end up doing is replacing them. If a burr develops on one side, I might quickly just knock that off and keep going, but realistically, uh, it's not worth a whole lot of work. They are an inexpensive item, so simply replacing them is usually the most logical option. Uh, this is very poorly filmed. You can't see my hand, so I'm going to, well, hopefully fix that. There we go. Uh, so here, what I'm doing to avoid screwing up the curve of the neck, because keep in mind, you don't want to mess with the carve. The razor blade does have the ability to act as a scraper and remove wood. So what I'm doing here is just applying minimal, minimal pressure. I'm not applying nearly enough to take the wood off. I could scrape this quicker by applying more pressure, but I'm not. And you can see that the, the grain on the neck was actually quite tight and it's not holding as much of the color as the rest of this. Uh, and I may choose to remedy that with some mahogany red uh, lacquer, or I may not. I'm not entirely sure haven't decided yet. So where this connects to the body there, that's a tough spot to scrape. That one will require a little bit more sanding, so I will get to that. Uh, and in fact, it's just slow, tedious hand sanding, so I'll probably get to that largely off camera, so to speak. Here I am evening out the back the rest of the way and making sure everything's nice and smooth, but also, like I said, abrading it a little bit so I can make sure that my paint will stick when the time comes to do the paintwork. Now this is going to get a, another quick final sand after we get the neck glued in and that will be in an upcoming video after we have filled the front which is part of what we have to do in probably our next video. Um, but for the purpose of, of this video I'm just sanding it nicely with I believe 800 grit or 600 grit. Uh, I think it was 800. Um, because I've kind of decided at this point that the back and sides may not need a colored lacquer. They might be, uh, they might be good with just a plain one, but we'll see. Maybe I'll give it an extra kick of red here. So let's get the front cleaned up and then I think we are good to go. All right, guys, so that is, well, that's it. That's the grain fill on the back and sides. The front is ready to go for its grain fill as well. I don't need to say much about this. It looks awesome. It looks like this as opposed to what it did before. And so, of course, you can use wood tinted green filler like normal color, you can use the dark walnut, you can use the red mahogany if you want this kind of look. And I think this is just beautiful. I'm, I'm now left with the difficult decision of whether I actually want to put a tinted lacquer over this, a color on the outside and the back, on the, the sides and back, or if I just want to leave it like this because it looks so damn good as far as I'm concerned. It's nice and smooth. It is basically ready for finish. We are going to do a mock-up assembly of this thing. We're going to get the neck glued in and everything uh, and get all that figured out before we put the actual finish on. But yeah, very, very happy with that. Neck looks good too. We got some, some nice color on there. Um, and so I'll probably tint the fretboard because I've got a lot of questions recently about putting color on the fretboard. But the next thing that we're going to do on this guy before we do our mock-up, glue up and all of that, is we're gonna grain fill the front. And for that, I wanna keep it light. I want, I want my final product to have a light amber and everything. So I'm not gonna use a tinted filler on the front. Instead, I'm going to use an epoxy. Stay tuned, that will be in the next video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of this build. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.